Hello, everybody. This is Cheryl, and I'm glad to stop by. Um, I was just getting ready to do a video, and um, I actually got some happy mail. And so um, it's so beautiful. I was in an exchange uh, for one of the videos. I mean, for one of the um, items I'm going to show you that I received. Um, we uh, in Junkers Co-op did a swap and everybody had to do a letter for Joy. So I got two of my letters today and here they are. This is from Cheryl Rhoda and this is the J and she sent along this, which is amazing. Um, I love how she did it. She used a crepe paper ruffle, which I love using crepe paper. I think that is just a brilliant, brilliant idea. Um, I hope I'm in frame and you can see that. And then she put several stars and a bow and silver. And she really knows me well, <laughs> my colors. And then um, the next person knows me very, very well because <laughs> it's pink. And here it is. And this is from Cindy Hopwood. And she's also in the group, um, Junkers um, uh, Co-op to which I'm a part of and very happy to be. And um, this is the Y. So I'm just waiting now for the O and I'm going to be hanging this year round in my studio, regardless of it's winter themed or Christmas or what have you, because it's its joy. And um, that's why I do what I do because it brings me great joy and um, hopefully it brings others great joy. So anyway, I am extremely blown away by these two girls and their, and what they did with this template. I mean, that was the template that we were given to use. And, um, you know, that's the back and, um, yeah, they just did a fabulous job. So I, I don't know if you can see that, but can't you just see that hanging, um, in my craft room? Um, especially those of you who know me, I'm so shabby chic, but it's just gorgeous. And thank you very much, Cindy and Cheryl for such an awesome, awesome swap. It was great. Never expected, just totally blew my mind when I opened the package. They also sent along, Cindy sent along some of the most beautiful ceramic buttons and I'm going to nag her to death until she tells me where she got them because they are absolutely beautiful they are ceramic as you can hear and they're buttons <laughs> so yeah i was very very happy to get those and then cheryl also sent along she also sent along some book pages which was great because we can always use those i use them for everything and she knows that so we'll just put those over here actually i don't want those to break so i'm going to put those right in my dish back here and then Cheryl also sent along a little goodie package. She sent me beautiful snowflakes, which is great because what I'm working on, I need them and I don't have any. And I do have a die cut, but it's annoying me because for some reason it's not cutting through the paper completely. And it is a Sizzix die. So my snowflakes are not, <laughs> they are right now making me crazy. So, um, so these are coming very handy. Thank you, Cheryl. And she also sent me these beautiful, gorgeous um, doilies. I love the big ones. There's so much you can do with them. And I will be doing something with them in this project as well, Cheryl. So thank you. And she sent me some bells, which I only had one. And I've been hoarding it for something specific. So... Now I have a whole bunch. <laughs> so that was really thoughtful. Thank you, Cheryl. I needed it desperately. And where did you find the white pom-pom trim? Because I need a lot more of it. <laughs> so it's perfect. It's the perfect size. It's exactly what I need for an upcoming journal. So if you could let me know that, it would be terrific. Thanks so much. It was really nice of you. And then she sent me some gorgeous vintage lace collars oh my gosh aren't they beautiful just gorgeous she knows me well she sent me two or three. Oh, oh gosh yes 
She sent me three. Okay, so thank you so much for that. Some tickets, which are very hard to find. Um, I know that you can find them at, um, let's see, I think it's under five, it's called. Everything in the store is under $5. She put everything in a glassine bag and she tied it with mint green tulle. And I'll be using the tulle as well. And of course the bag is delightful to use in any journal or any project. And um, so that was really, really great. Thank you so much, girls. I really appreciate it. And thank you, everybody else who's joined me for allowing me the time to share these things with you. And lastly, I got a gift from a dear friend. Um, her name is Ellie, and she goes by Periwinkle Matilda on YouTube. And we became very fast friends when she started her YouTube channel and her Facebook group. And we have been crafting together now for months. Seems like years. But she's currently um, living in uh, on Victoria Island in British Columbia, which is really too bad because she used to live in Maryland and I'm in Florida. So, and I can't get to um, uh, Victoria and she can't get here because of the lockdowns. But I have to show you what she sent me and it's, just beautiful. Here is the card that she sent me in the typical um, Ellie fashion. And um, she just said that she treasured our friendship. Merry Christmas and a happy new year and left me a note. And then she knows me so well. I love, I am a child at heart and I collect dolls and so does she, which is, we have a lot in common. <laughs> and um, anyway, she made this. Um, it's, um, just, yeah. So she's going to sit with me and she's going to be my crafting helper. And her name is Annalie. So you'll be talking or hearing about Annalie probably from now until I'm no longer doing YouTube videos because my dog Daisy, she doesn't like to be, um, bothered. She's asleep in here, but she doesn't like to bother me. And I just figured that Annalie might want to hand me glue every once in a while or just give me her opinions as to whether I should go with pink or pink. So um, anyway, thank you for allowing me to share Annalie with you from my friend Allie at Periwinkle Matilda. I highly suggest that you visit her on her YouTube channel and um, her Facebook group is Growing Leaps and Bounds, so you might want to join the Facebook group as well. So anyway, that's from Ellie, and she also sent me a few other things. Excuse my reach, I just wanted to put her back over there. She's sitting very quietly listening. I'm sure she's like, oh my gosh, why did you put me in front of the camera in front of millions? Because I don't like to do it. Um, so I'm just thinking that's why. Anyway, she sent me a whole bunch of goodies as well, and uh, one of which I don't have currently in my room because I've put it with my sewing things, but I'll show you at another time. She um, crocheted me a strawberry um, pin cushion um, for my needles because I joined Roxy's, um, Roxy's Stitchery Journey. I think it's called. I don't remember. I'll leave that information if you want it. Just let me know. Put it in the comments. Um, it's slow stitching and you're not far behind. It's not starting until January. They have done a few videos. Uh, Rachel from Roxy Creations and her sister Sarah and her mom. And um, so I've joined that and it's um, going to run for six months. And we're going to, we've already learned several stitches, but it's not something that you can't start now. Because like I said, it's really not starting until January. So you've got right now to do your sampler pages, which aren't difficult at all. Um, they're just some stitches and they take you through the stitches, show you how to do the stitches and all that. So if you want more information about that, please let me know in the comment box and I'll definitely get you that information, no problem. Or visit Rachel 
at Roxy Creations and look for one for videos on slow stitching and it will give you all the information. She just did another one yesterday. Don't let it intimidate you if you watch that one first. I highly suggest that you go to the very first one where she shows like the fabrics and threads and things that she's going to be using. So back to Ellie, she also sent me these gorgeous napkins. Um, and um, yeah, I won't be using them anytime soon. <laughs> So, because they are so perfect, it's just this retro reindeer. Um, I told her I was never using this fox because one of the first videos I watched of Ellie's, um, she used this fox and um, she brought back um, a reminder of using um, chalks. And that was just wonderful because now I'm using them all the time. So these are her gorgeous napkins from her collection. As you can see, she is an avid collector of napkins, as I am, and she has some gorgeous napkins. I think Canada and the UK have all the um, beautiful napkins, <laughs> I'm convinced, because anytime I get napkins from the UK or from Canada, they look like this. If anybody has seen my video from my friend Fifi, um, I actually did a video in her group. Um, she shared with me um, also some napkins, which were just divine. So this will go in my divine uh, napkin collection. And Ellie also sent me this beautiful um, piece of crocheted um, doilies, which I'll be using in my stitching because that will remind me of the most wonderful Christmas gift she could have given me is Anna Lee. So that's that. And um, like I said, the um, one other thing that I just absolutely love is the pin needle cushion. Because now every time I stitch, I'll be using both my needlework that I've just created and my uh, strawberry crocheted um, needle um, strawberry. It's just darling. So today I was... Um, having to do a, um, just push everything out of the way. Um, today I had to do a, and I'm far behind on my swaps because I've not been feeling well. And as you know, I've, I talked about that in my previous video. And again, today I just, I, I had a, another bad day, um, as far as fatigue. So I rested a lot and I do feel better right now. So, um, my doctors are working with me, which is good. And I do have some tests coming up after the first of the year so um you know if you could be thinking about me that would be great otherwise um i'm in my place of joy and i'm happy to be here with you um in any event i'm having to do for a swap a um repurposed composition notebook and i know that all of you have seen these you can get them at the dollar tree for a dollar 25 you can get them at walmart you can get them on amazon you can get them you know staples you can get them anywhere it's just a plain composition notebook and i know that a lot of you probably have seen um you know the reconstructing of a composition notebook into a beautiful journal and um so I joined a swap several months ago for a reconstructed composition notebook and I decorated it for fall, kind of fall going into Christmas. And um, unfortunately, she's in Canada. So I decided that rather than send her that because it didn't get sent, it was in my guest room with a bunch of other things that needed to be sent and it got pushed to the side and it didn't get sent, but that's okay because now she'll have a composition notebook that she can use or, or a journal she can use uh, for the winter months going into spring. So there's your composition notebook. It's just, you know, your everyday average composition notebook. I have decided, I started it yesterday um, and I did the cover. And then I decided, well, rather than do another project um, that I was working on I would take you along on this because this is this is due I want to get this to her she's in Canada and I want to get it to her before spring so I started the cover as you can see I've already done that and I've done the inside cover so what I'm going to do tonight 
is if you wanted to stay um, and watch I am going to do the back cover inside and outside and I'm going to do a few of the pages just to give you an idea of how easy this is this is a no measure composition reformation so you don't have to measure um, if you've been watching me long enough or if you know me enough you know that measurements and I don't get along that's why I can't bake <laughs> I do bake but I have to be very um, aware of what's going on I have to make sure that um, you know all my lines even on my cutting um, even what I use for my cutter I have the different lines all marked with tape because once somebody gets into um, one and three eighths or uh, one and four tenths and things like that, I'm lost. So I came up with a way to create uh, this um, without having to measure it because I know that I am not the only one. There's a lot of people probably that won't admit it, but I know that I'm not the only one. So. I did do the front and the back. The first thing I wanted to say about these is that you can't use wet glue. By wet glue, I mean uh, Elmer's uh, Fabri-Tac, uh, yeah, Tacky Glue. Not Fabri-Tac, but Tacky Glue. I've not used Fabri-Tac. Um, if you're going to use a glue stick, which I don't suggest because it, the paper will likely come up. The best glue that you're going to use for these are um, score tape now that's a brand name score tape is a brand name I'm not talking double-sided tape I'm talking score tape um, so if you wanted to use score tape you could but it doesn't give you any wiggle room once you've got that paper down on your book on your cover or on your pages if you do use score tape it's down so there's no wiggle room as far as you know, moving it to try and get it on your space. So I purchase Scotch wrinkle-free uh, glue stick. And the reason why I do that is because I've done several, um, what do you call them? Um, oh my goodness. It was my first journal I ever did. Um, you take a book and you, uh, you pull out so many pages and then you glue together you know, a couple of pages. Oh my goodness. I do this all the time. I get in front of the camera and I just go blank. Um, and I know you're all telling me exactly what I need to know, but I can't hear you. Um, let's see. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's when it's a, um, repurposed book. So in other words, if this is the book, you take the book and you count the pages, you see how many pages you have, you take three, and then you tear out so many, then you take three more, you tear out so many, and um, put it together. Well, when I was making mine, I was using wet glue, I was using um, all different kinds of glues, and the best I found was the wrinkle-free. It doesn't buckle your pages, it doesn't wrinkle your pages, and it's never, ever come unstuck from the pages. The pages have never come unstuck. And my first one I did was three and a half years ago, but it's way up there on the top shelf and I can't grab it down. Um, but it's together and it never wrinkled and it didn't buckle. Now, I did notice last night when I made this that it started to buckle a little bit. Um, and I'm using Fabri-Tac for the covers. For the pages, I will likely use my wrinkle-free glue stick um, for most of my pages, unless it's very heavy. Um, so anyway, I did use my Fabri-Tac, and I noticed that when when it was still wet, it seemed to kind of bow a little bit. But as soon as I put the, the inside cover on and got that down and closed it, it was fine. There was no buckling. I didn't put this under weights. I didn't do anything. I just left it the way it was because I decided that rather than me do this alone, I might as well do it and bring you along with me. So without further ado, we'll get into that. Now here's where I mean no measure. 
And what I'm going to do is, this is obviously the front and the middle pages of my journal that I've decided to use. And um, where she's from Canada, I thought that it would be the perfect kind of winter themed um, uh, paper to you. So I've got several different papers I'm using, but this one I just thought was adorable. And um, it has really cute um, pages that go with it. So um, in any event, that's what I'm going to be using. So I'm going to do the back cover. And I decided on this piece here. And what I have done is I've cut out a lot of my elements so far. This is one that I'm using currently. It's my um, one. I did do a video on this if anybody's interested in seeing it. This is just my ephemera book. And anytime I cut elements for um, any journal that I'm doing, I always make one of these ahead of time to um, put my pieces in so that everything is together and all I have to do is go and look and see which ones I want. I haven't cut everything I want for this one yet because I just started it last night, but I have cut a few things up already. So that's what that's about. And then, um, and like I said, I do have a, a video if you wanna go back and see how that is made. Um, I do have a video on that. And also, or if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment book because box because I would be happy to do it again if somebody wanted me to. And I have a few leftover elements from my last project that I was working on. And here are my full pages that I'll be using that I've just pulled from different places in my stash that had to do with winter. So let's get going. And I decided already on this page and um, on this page. My problem is, is which do I want for the outside and which do I want for the inside? And I really wish I could hear you and I can't. So I was going to print another one of these so that they would match, but then I was like, no, I, I actually kind of like this one um, better than to match it. So I thought what we'd do is we would put this one on that side and I hope I'm in frame. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And I'll show you how I do that. And I just noticed that I didn't cut my white space off. So if you just don't mind one second while I do that, it'd be great. <clears throat> I am having some tea and I hope that that's okay um, with you. I just wanna be able to video um, I'll try very hard not to talk too much, but you know me, I can't even leave one comment when I'm watching a video, I have to leave 20. <laughs> and I'm so sorry for all of you that follow me that have YouTube channels because I chatter so much, like I'm the only one that's having craft time with you. But anyway, so what I do next, is I make sure that my cut was good and it's gonna butt up right against that edge. But I wanna make sure that that's where I want it. You know, do I want it down a little bit further? You know, do I want this rose? Where do I want the rose? No, I want that whole bottom. I want this whole bottom. So I'm gonna butt it up against that edge there. And I'm just gonna make sure that I go um, to that edge, okay? And that looks great. That's butting up perfectly to this black. Now, I've done these several times with several different covers. Um, one of my favorite ones to do is fabric, obviously. Um, I love to do the fabric covered ones. Um, but I do like to do the paper covered ones as well. And I was going to paint this because it's very easily painted. I use chalk paint and I dab it on before I put my paper on if I'm going to paint it. However, I just thought that the black looked very stunning with this paper. So I decided to leave it as an accent. And um, so yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. 
So my next step is to take my Fabri-Tac and I'm going to run just a bead of it right along this edge, okay? I'm not gonna cover the entire um, book, the Mayan frame. I'm just gonna go along that edge. I'm not putting the glue along that solid black because I'm actually going to put the paper on and then push it towards the black. I don't want to get any glue on that black because it will, it doesn't show up, but it's just easier. And you just put a very thin line. That's all you need. And then I like to keep the book open because that way I won't put my paper on upside down. It's happened. <laughs> so... If I keep it open, then I won't put it upside down. And by using the Fabri-Tac, I can actually put it down and slide it up so that none of that black is showing. And this is eight and a half by 11 paper that I'm using that I just printed on um, I don't remember the weight, but it is a linen type paper that I'm using for the cover. And you can get it at Walmart. You can get it at Staples, Amazon, whatever. It's got a really nice texture to it. It's almost, it almost feels like wallpaper and it's nice and thin. Oh, it's not thin, thin. It's got some weight to it, but it's got a nice texture. Um, the colors print on it beautifully, and when I die cut anything from it, it looks gorgeous. And let me see if I have it. I do have the box here. It's um, here we go. It's called Southworth. It's 25% cotton with a linen finish and it's 65 pound. And I'll only use it for things like this or for die cutting my flowers if I wanna watercolor them. Um, if I wanna do some stamping and put, and you know use a little bit of watercolor, I, I use that. So, and I have that both in ivory and the ivory is a much thinner weight. The ivory I think is 29 pounds and I use that for my French letters that I have scanned and, um, and I use in my projects. I have some real um, French letters from the 1800s and I don't use them obviously. I scan them into my computer and I photocopy them to use them because I use them very often in my creations. So what I'm trying to find, okay, this is my, one of my most used tools in my toolbox. And what it is, is just, it's a white um, eraser. And if you do get any Fabri-Tac on something or some place where you don't want it, it takes it right off. This one happened to be from Stamping Up, Stampin Up, but you can find them anywhere in any art store. Um, Michael's, I'm sure, has them. Um, but they're fabulous for removing any residue that you get on your paper that you don't want there. I've had to lift things before and move them slightly and ended up getting the glue on something where I didn't want it. And once it dries, it's gotta be dry. Make sure it's dry completely. And it acts like almost like a sandpaper, but it's not. It's just, yeah, it doesn't, and it doesn't do anything to your paper and it doesn't do anything to um, anything that you're using it on. It's fabulous. So that's all I use that for. And that's like, that's like, <laughs> That's a really great tool. Okay, so now that we have that stuck down, it's dry, as you can see. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my um, Fabri-Tac, and I'm going to make sure I'm going to go right up inside there. And I'm going to go along that line, and I'm going to cover 
not too much. Don't soak it. But just make sure you get your edges good because unless you're going to sew it, which you can, um, absolutely do because it's not a heavy chipboard. And I have sewn them before. It's not easy, but it can be done. So you just wanna get that glue on like that. And then if you have a silicone brush, you don't need one, you don't need to do this next step. But if you do happen to have a silicone brush, it's sometimes good to take it and just very quickly before it dries, just go over that glue so that it doesn't smush out or whatever and it gets where you want it and then put your paper down. And then you just wanna do that. And you can use copy paper. You do not have to use 65 pound, or what did I say it was, 60, 65 pound? You don't have to use 65 pound uh, cotton paper. I just use it because I like the look of it. But you can use 65 pound um, anything. And that's it. That's all you're going to do for there. Now I wait a few minutes before I cut it. It really doesn't matter that that glue is there because I'm going to cover it, but I just wanted you to see how easy that is to clean that up in the event that you weren't going to cover the inside. It, cut, it takes it right off. So that's that. Now what I'm going to do next is, all I'm going to do is take my... Oh dear. I do it every single time. I just have it in my hand. Let's see if it's in here. I'm looking for my um, I'm looking for my blade, which was here a second ago. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, let's see. If I put it over here, and I did not, um, with my blade, it's so much easier, but you can use scissors, so that's what I'm going to do. I just don't like cutting because I can't cut worth beans. I like to use a blade. I feel like it comes out much neater, but... I'm not going to sit here all night looking for it, so. And I'm telling you as soon as I finish cutting this, now just go all the way straight up. Don't try and go around the bend. Turn it over, I have to turn it over because I'm right-handed and I have to cut this way. And just go right up along the edge of that and cut it. I know a lot of people do measure, but last night when I measured this, my front cover and my back cover were different sizes. Um, the black here did not line up with the paper after I measured it and cut it. So I thought, I'm not doing that anymore. Now, as you can see, there's like this little bow. And I thought, oh, that's odd because that's never happened before. But you'll see, it will go away. Then what you do is, when you're finished, just take your corner chomper. If you have one, if not, you can use your scissors. You want to use your one-inch side. And all you do is... Oh, my goodness. I'm looking for that. Is it the half inch? Yes. Yeah. So you go in with your half inch side. Nope, it's not your half inch. Sorry. I think it's the quarter.
Nope. It's going to be the half inch. Nope. What is going on? Oh, <laughs> hello. Doing it the wrong way. You know what? I'm just going to cut it because I can't, for some reason, seem to get it in there. It's locking, and I'm not sure why. If I took it out of camera you know what I'm just going to use my scissors because I'd have to take it out of camera before so that you could see how I did that but you could just punch it and round it and you'll be fine you can also use your scissors obviously so I'm going to do that before I completely ruin my cover so just follow it right along there and the same with this. But rather than trying going around and then straight down, do straight down and then round your corners. And then that way it's nice and straight and even all the way around. Okay, so now we'll do the inside and we're gonna do the inside the same way we did the outside. And I'm going to use this paper, which I'm going to have to, in order for it to look right, I'm going to have to trim it. Just for, just so that the pattern is is on in matching up. With the side here. So I'm just going to take my phone folder and I'm going to run it down as tight here as I can get it so that I can cut that straight and this is where I will be missing my blade <laughs> because like I said cutting with a straight cutting a straight line is not something that I do so I'm really giving that a good crease right up against where I'm going to be placing it okay and then that should work. So then I'm just going to take it and look one more time for my blade so I don't have to use scissors. Let me just look in my glue box real quick. And it's not in there. Well, here's what I'm going to do then. Um, I think what I'll do is I'm going to fold it where I did that. And then I'm going to take it and fold it back. You don't have to do this. If you have a blade, if you put a knife up against that, your blade's gonna run straight down. I'm doing this because I wanna make sure it's straight. <laughs> and I have to be able to see it. And my eyesight's not the best. <laughs> so, I'm just giving it, making sure it's straight before I cut it. And then just take your scissors and stay on the line. I 
I am a perfectionist and I was a recovering perfectionist for a while, but I was miserable. And once I realized that if I could just accept my perfectionism, I'd have a much better time. And so I have accepted my perfectionism and I am having much more fun. <laughs> so I know in junk journaling, nothing has to be perfect, but it's just who I am. I can't help it. So there we go. That's where I want it. My two points are here. My bottom point is there. And that's where I think I want it. So again, I'm going to run my glue just along this edge here, right here on the cardboard part, okay? And you don't need too much. And you're gonna take your paper, how you want it. And I know where my point is down here, so that's, you know, I want the point to be on. I want my points to not go over and I'm gonna slide it onto the glue and into that binding. And just push it down. Make sure it's where you want it, and it is, just in case you wanna push it up or down. And then just run your bone folder along it so that it's really tucked nice in there, like that. And that's all you do. I hope you all had a great day today. I didn't even ask. Mine was pretty good. I did rest a lot, but it was a good day. So then what I want to do is just bring it up and close it and just leave it for, you know, a second so that that cures and dries good. And you'll notice that it did come up around the edge like that. That's how mine was for the front inside cover as well but you'll notice that it's not like that anymore so just let that dry for a minute and the Fabri-Tac dries very fast anyway and it doesn't warp anything so that's dry enough you want to go back in And just give a little squeeze and then around your edges not too close to the edge because you're going to be brushing that out with your bone folder or whatever you choose to use to smooth that out now again you have to work pretty quickly with that silicone brush because this glue dries pretty fast but if you do wipe it, you're not going to get any lumps, bumps, or anything like that. So just take and go down your edge. And this is perfect for any child going back to school, any adult going back to school. Um, perfect for an art journal. Um, you can put down... Um, layers of gesso and things like that. I'm just starting my journey into um, art journaling and I have found some couple of different people that have been watching their videos and um, have been teaching me a lot and um, so I've been watching those videos when I'm not feeling well and I have a friend in Canada, her name's Fifi. She's um, on Facebook as well, she's a dear friend. And um, 
She's actually helped me buy my products so that I can get started, so that I'm not buying things I'm not going to need and things like that. So she even helped me with my uh, art journal that I was going to make, but then she actually showed me one um, to purchase. And it was, it was gonna be much cheaper and it was much better quality paper than I would have been using. She, by the way, is Fifi the Paper Crafter on Facebook. And you might want to check that Facebook group out. It's fabulous. And she does some um, tutorials, I think, twice a week. Um, but you can check out her channel. Uh, she's fabulous. And if you want to know anything about uh, product, um, especially when it comes to Ranger or Tim Holtz, she's on it. <laughs> she's She's got that. The other one I just started following, and I'm not sure. I know that she does mixed media on Saturday or Sunday. I'm not positive, but it's Kara at Reborn. Um, I'm so sorry. I always forget. It's Be a Reborn Art and Healing. That's her YouTube channel. And her name is Kara Renee. So those are two that I follow in mixed media. <laughs> and I can't wait to get started. I do have my watercolors gifted from my fan from my children for my birthday. I have um, I have quite a few products to start, so I'm looking forward to it. So that's all set. It's all glued, and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to open it up, and we're going to go straight along here. Anna Lee, who you met at the beginning of the video, is watching me very intently. <laughs> it's kind of nice having her here. Thanks, Ellie. You're so sweet to have done that. She even made her a pink dress because she knows that pink is my favorite color. And oh, by the way, um, if you're interested in Ellie's doll that she made me and you'd like the pattern, she didn't use one. <laughs> so good luck. <laughs> yeah, she made Anna Lee without a pattern. Curls and all. So funny. She's very talented, that girl. This community is full of talent. I once um, answered a question on my friend, um, um, Angela Kerr's uh, Facebook site, who's another one of my favorite, favorite artists in our community. And, um, I answered a question months ago on um, what other crafts do you do besides, or have you done besides paper crafting? And oh my goodness, what a response. It was crazy, but it was so amazing how everyone, no matter what they had done or what they continue to do in their crafting endeavors, um, it, you know, brings them back to paper. I mean, it, it, it does. Now, what I did for this corner is I just snipped it there and then I cut it along here so that I would get a clean cut. But I used my blade and my ruler and I miss it, but I'm not going to look for it. I'm going to just go for it. I'm just going to get a small pair of scissors and go from this side. And just snip that piece off. 
Make sure it's tucked in there good, which it is. It's tucked in there good. Now I just have to round my edges. There. And there. And there you have, I'm just gonna have to cut just a tiny bit, trim a tiny bit from here. This is where your blade comes in really handy. There's a tiny sliver. And I'm not getting up close enough to it with this. Yes, I am. There we go. And it's still stuck down because it was just hanging over the edge. And there you have a beautiful transformed already something that looks absolutely fabulous for a dollar and a few cents for the paper and the ink and that's your your difference this is your regular composition notebook and here is your already transformed into a gorgeous beginnings of a gorgeous journal so and you can use any papers. You can do summer and winter, fall. You can do flower, flowers. You can do Jane Austen. You can do um, a complete art journal. Um, from the people that I've been watching their videos using different kinds of gessos and things like that, if you do the gesso right over it. I used to do Bible journaling, and if I put the gesso over the paper first, it didn't bleed or anything like that. So... So that's my front page, I mean my back cover, inside, front, inside, and there's the back. And I don't know how long I've been here, but I do have one more thing. Um, let's see what we're going to do. Um, I'm just trying to see if we should do the next step on this. I don't know how long the video has been running so far, and I do have one more thing to cover. So I think we'll work on this. Um, I think I'll do one inside page for you just to show you, okay? So what I'm going to do is this is the first page. And to make it sturdy, because these are kind of flimsy, I'm going to open it up wide. I'm gonna put my scissors away first. I don't need those right yet. And I am going to choose something. Oh no, first I'm going to show you how I glue it. Now you can use glue stick as long as it's like a no wrinkle glue stick. You could also use Fabri-Tac um, because Fabri-Tac isn't going to, you know, do any harm to your pages. I have not used a gel medium. Um, I'll have to ask Kara or um, Fifi if that's something that I could use to glue the pages together to make them a little bit more hefty to hold other things that I'm going to be doing with the journal. So I'm gonna open up my first page. I'm gonna run a bead just along that edge and then down this edge and then across this edge, and then I'm gonna go right into, right into the seam, into where it binds with the string, right in there. Because every time you glue pages together, if you do glue where that string is, you're only, you, you're making it more, you're, you're causing more strength both to the spine and the pages. And then just run your glue stick along like this across. Don't let it dry out anywhere. 
And then what you want to do is you want to bring it. You want to bring this page. You want to put your fingers. See where my fingers are? It's already gotten there. <laughs> you want to bring that to that page as far as you can. You want to take your book and you want to close it. Okay. And then open it back up. And this ensures you that you've got both pages stuck together and you can do this for your reconstructed book as well. If you're going to do a journal out of a book and you're going to separate the pages and things like that, cut out pages, this is how I do it. And that way, um, and that way your pages, um, are together. If you can see, it doesn't, you can't even tell that those are two pages stuck together. Okay. So there's that one. Then I'm going to skip a couple. Two. Three. Four. Actually, what did I, I just counted. All right, I did two together. I'm going to count one, two, three, four. That's four pages. On my fifth page, turn it and take your glue, either your Fabri-Tac or your wrinkle-free glue stick or your whatever glue stick you use. As long as it's not going to wrinkle up your pages and you can test it on your pages because you can always tear out the page of the book if it doesn't work go up to the side down the edge and across and then just a few swipes you don't have to cover the whole page just a few of the swipes And I'm telling you, my my um, reconstructed book journal is three and a half years old. I show it in one of my videos. None of the pages ever came unglued. Again, you take that fifth page, this fifth page, you're going to lift up your book like, your composition book like this. You're going to pull it tight, pull this page tight with your fingers to that page right in the middle, and then close your book. Okay, then open it back up. Oops, try and find that page. <laughs> Which is the fifth, two. Could probably use a paper clip so you don't lose your page. Three, four, four. So these are the two pages you just glued together and just wipe, you know, with your bone folder, wipe it across. And you can do as many pages as you want. You could do two pages, five pages, eight pages. It doesn't matter. You just want to have some sturdiness so that when you do decorate that page or you put a pocket on that page or you do the different things that we're going to do with this book, as we move along, I think that this is probably going to take three videos. Um, and I will do some things off camera so that you can um, see. But if you wanted to do something like this and you want to follow along, you can start gluing your pages together. You can also, now I just did my fifth and sixth page here. And I'm going to start using some paper clips so that I know where I'm at because my next page, I'm going to do a pocket, which is one, two, three, four. Here's my fifth page. I think I'm gonna go five. This is my sixth page. Okay, now with this page, 
I want to do a pocket. So I'm going to switch over to this glue, okay? And I'm just going to run a bead. How do I want the pocket to go? I think I want the pocket to go this way. So it's going to be a deep pocket. I'm going to go along the bottom, very small, thin line along the bottom. And then I'll go, oops, a nice thin line from the top to the bottom, not right up against your edge because you don't want your other pages to get glue on them. Okay, because the glue is going to spread anyway once you put it down. Again, you want to take it, pull it, push it, and do this. Okay. And... I am going to paper clip this right now so that I know when I decorate this page, that's going to, that's a pocket. I'm going to be putting a pocket there. Actually, I have to do, I'm sorry, I'll do, so it's the 6th to the 7th, the 7th to the 8th. If you're going to do a pocket, you want to do two pages. Just to give it that heft that you need to hold whatever it is that you're going to put in there, which I'm going to put a large journaling tag. Okay. Again, lift up your book, pull it, push it down, and close your book. And that way it'll be together. Now you've got, what did I do here? That's from last night because I pushed it closed like that. Okay. Hold on one second. There we go. So you've got, you're, you've got four, I'm sorry, you've got two pages glued together. Okay, not just one. And so your pocket's going to be right here. Okay? And I'm going to put a paper clip there just to remind me that I have a pocket up there when I decorate. Okay? I'll show you one more thing. This front page, I am going to... I have some blue paper and some pink paper. My avocado dyed paper, I don't know if you can see the difference. It is pink, but I scanned some avocado dyed paper and it didn't come out as pink as it, as I thought it would, but it's still definitely pink. And there is pink in here. And I do like the softness of the pink. And then this came out more blue I wanted to kind of match it up with the blue here, but I think it's fine. So anyway, I'll show you how to attach the paper. If I can figure out here. Okay, so here is my pocket. I got some glue on the edge of my paper last night. So I'm just gonna take my little eraser This reminds me of wrapping Christmas presents. I put something down and it just disappears. So I'm just gonna erase that glue off that I got on there last night that kinda stuck my pages together a little bit. I'm just gonna take it right off. There we go. I'm sorry about that. I 
Now here I have a torn page. I am just going to tear that out because it got torn, but I'm not going to throw it away. Um, it got torn because it got stuck from my glue last night. So my next page, I want to be, actually, I think what I'll do is cover my pocket page with the blue paper. And all you do is, you're going to take your blue paper, which is um, also scanned. This is photocopy paper, just plain photocopy paper. I don't even know the weight of it, but it's just photocopy paper. It's just almost as thin as this. I'm going to cover this page and I'm going to do it the same way. Now I know a lot of people will use this as a template. They'll put it on here, they'll glue it, they'll cut it, and then they'll put it onto the page, which isn't a bad idea actually. You could do it that way. Put it on, glue it. No, you couldn't because, no, because then you'd be tearing out pages and then, like, a, this is string bound, so, yeah, that's not going to work. We'll keep it the way I do it. <laughs> so, just run your glue stick down just like you, you would if you were going to glue this page to here. So, just run it down here. Run it down your edge. in here and then run it across now this is going to give your pocket a nice heavy weight so whatever you put in this pocket is going to be held by uh, let's see one two three pages and then you want to take your paper. I just turn my book because it's easier for me to see. I stick it right in where that binding is. Line it up along the page of the bottom. Go nice and smooth into that um, crease of the spine. It's nice in there. Oops. Now you can do this also, which I will be doing. You can add a few pieces of watercolor paper for the person if they wanted to do some art journaling in it. You can put a calendar in it if a person wanted to use it as a um, bullet journal. Um, you could do anything. There's just, there's so many things you can do with these. Okay, and then all you're going to do is just let that sit and let the glue sit and dry nice before you go and cut it. I mean, there are often times where I will have, like I said, be careful, don't rub your glue off unless it's dry with your eraser. But oftentimes I'll have several of these pieces of paper sticking out because I want the glue to really dry nice before I go and cut it. It just makes things easier. And that's all you're going to do for that. And I'm gonna do the other side the exact same way because I want my pocket, I want that page, that one page I want to look exactly the same on both sides. So again, we're gonna take our glue stick I know this isn't the most fun part of this book, but when you're finished with this journal, you're going to love the process. It's very relaxing. Um, there's not a lot of thinking involved. Um, except for when you come to decorate it or where you're going to put your pockets and things like that.
There we go. Take my paper. Now I have to turn it this way because I want my paper to go this way. Again, I'm going to line it up, make sure I'm in frame. I'm going to line it right up to that bottom edge there and stick it right down. Oops, stick it right down in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And run it across the bottom just so that it's straight. And do down here. And then close your book. And just give it a minute. And then take your bone folder. I know I keep repeating myself, I'm so sorry. I don't have to. Take your bone folder. Let's make sure that your paper is on there nice and tight. And what you've just done is you've made a really nice sturdy piece right there. Okay, so you've got, let's see, these two are together because you're going to put something on here. I am. And then you've got um, another one right here. I usually paper clip the ones I put together until I'm done in case I want to um, decorate that. Okay. So, and then you've got those pages, which are, um, you know, plenty of writing space. And you can always take if say you wanted to put something on here that's heavier, um, you could always glue this to here later. You don't have to do this all at once, but for me, I like to do this part all at once. And that's all you do. And then like I said, I just leave it alone and go on and start your next page or pages that you wanna you know, do to glue together. And we'll save the rest for, I want to say tomorrow, but I really doubt it because we're traveling on Saturday and um, it's a, about a five hour travel time and um, I'm not feeling the best, so I want to rest as much as possible. So um, we don't have the opportunity to see our children as often as we'd like um, with health reasons my husband's heart attack and my um and my uh different illnesses um we haven't been able to see them nearly as much so i really do want to make sure that i get there for christmas the last thing but not least is i have another giveaway as you recall last night i showed you um an album a portfolio, a folio, a, um, a folio that I will be um, raffling or doing a, a draw for, for anybody who's left a comment on that video. So if you haven't already commented on the video, please watch the video. Tell me something that you liked about the video and um, leave a comment. And um, because I'm giving away all of my design team projects. So if I do a design team project, um, whatever I make for that design team project, I'll be um, wrap, uh, doing a drawing of the names of the people who have left me a message, uh, subscribed to my channel, left me a message, and um, yeah, and then I'll do a draw with those names and you will receive that item. So go to yesterday's video and you'll see that um you'll see that um stationary folio that i made leave a comment as to what you like best about the about it and um for those of you who did not leave a comment as to what you liked best about it that's no problem i already know who you are 
but anybody else if you if you could just leave a message as to what you like best about the um video or the item um that would be great i'd really appreciate it it will help me know what more um content to give um when i do do videos and then um this is the last thing i created this several months ago for a um for a video tutorial in one of my groups and i love love the way it came out and it's my design i'm sure it's been done a gazillion times but it's something that i did and i thought that it would be something fun and it would be definitely a nice gift to give to a crafter so what I've done is I took um, an eight and a half by 11. Did I do eight and a half by 11? I don't remember. Um, hold on one second. Let me see what I did here. No, uh, I don't remember. I'm sorry, I did not. I took a 12 by 12 and I cut it in half maybe. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. I did. So I took a 12 by 12 piece of paper and I cut it down. No, I didn't. You know what I used? I used newspaper. <laughs> I covered it with newspaper. I did. So what I did was I took a piece of newspaper. I cut it down. I cut it lengthwise. Um, I'll do a video on it, but anyway, I used newspaper and then I covered it with eight and a half by 11 paper. And then the front I did decoupage on, not decoupage, but I did, you know, a, um, kind of a collage. I cut the middle out. I put in a piece of cellophane, <clears throat> excuse me, acetate from like stamps or something that I collect. And this is in German. It was from um, one of my, I'm sorry, French, from one of my French letters. And it said December 25th, 1868. So I put that there. Um, here's some embossed paper, some French um, writing uh, script. And then some lace, a little dangle that I made to hang off the side. And then when you open it up, it's... Um, you've got a postcard here it doesn't mean anything it's just something that i put there actually to cover the back of the cellophane and where i had cut the square out so that's the reason why i put that there this is just an old french uh, i'm sorry italian christmas letter and then what i did was i took papers uh some digitals and other things that i had gotten for freebies and um, things i just had in my stash and I put it in this little book. So I've got that page. I've got away in the manger. I've got a French letter, script letter. <clears throat> I've got some fabric, a panel of fabric. And I have some tea stained paper. I have a piece of lace. This is vintage um, lace that I had in my stash. This is another piece of fabric. This is some wallpaper, a piece of wallpaper. This is from um, a 1950s sheet uh, fabric. Here is a piece of Christmas um, paper uh, doily copied onto this, embroidered doily copied onto that. And then here is some six by six scrapbook paper. Here is a paper doily, six by six scrapbook paper with cross stitch on it. I have some glue on my fingers. Another piece of music, some French paper, some Italian paper, more fabric with a little bit of lace, part of another French let, uh, letter, some tea stained doily, and then the last page is another Christmas letter in Italian. You wouldn't have to use it for that. You could use it for anything. 
What's the purpose of this book, you're probably wondering. It's to give as a gift for somebody who's a journaler, or crafter, or anybody or anything. Um, and then they can take it apart and they can use all of these things for, for their journal. It's just little samples. It's kind of, a, I guess, a sampler book is what you would call it. And then I also enclosed some copies of my French letters. There's one, and this is done on the linen paper, and here's another one. And then the back has a pocket. It says Cherished Moments, and it did have postcards in there. I'll put them back in. I don't know why I took them out. I stitched it all the way around. It's all stitched. And once you use everything up in here, you could definitely use this as, um, I don't know, maybe a flip over, you know, a page in a journal. Or once you've used it up, you can, you know, this will be all gone. You could use the cover and possibly put a picture over this and use it this way as a journal. Does that make sense? So um, in any event, leave me a comment of something that you liked about this video that I did today. And I would like to send this to somebody who um, joined me today. So I really appreciate it. And again, it does say all is calm, all is bright, easily covered up if you wanted to. Decoupaged and again, you know, you've got laces and fabrics and papers and anything else you might want to use to start a journal. So there you go. Um, I'd really like to give that away as well because, like I said, it was just something that I made for a tutorial for one of my groups. So again, it's been a pleasure. Um, we will continue to work on the um, reconstruction of our composition notebook and... Um, I, I'm thinking two more videos on the reconstruction of that so that you can see pretty much what I do. Okay, it's been great. Um, my journey so far has been wonderful with you all. I am so glad to have you all here. And um, I want to wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas. And I hope that it is just the best one yet. Um going into the new year i wish everybody a healthy happy safe and very prosperous new year on their new journeys or whatever they are planning for the new year i know that i plan on doing at least three to four videos a week so i hope that happens and i hope that you all continue to follow me because i have a lot of inspiration to give and it's joyful for me so thank you so much for watching and have a good evening. Bye-bye.